hormone sensitive disease is a pretty, uh, I think it's a misconception as to what that really means. I think most of us define advanced prostate cancer into castration naive, which are patients who actually have not received suppression of testosterone yet. Testosterone suppression is the backbone of treatment for men with prostate cancer since DHT, dehydrotestosterone, is the primary activator of the androgen receptor, if you will, at front. So castration naive means to me that you have not received yet testosterone suppressive therapy. Castration sensitive, or what you're describing as hormone sensitive, would imply to me that the lack of testosterone is leading to an improvement in outcome, meaning you are responding to a lack of testosterone. However, you get that either using LHRH agonists, antagonists, or in fact, even if you decide to do surgical orchiectomies. The goal of the game is medical castration for us. And the third one, which is castration resistant, is when you develop progressive disease, either by a rising PSA, clinical symptoms, or radiographic progression, any of those three in the context of a low testosterone level, which for us in the field is a testosterone less than 50. There are a lot of misconceptions about how one becomes castration resistant or how one develops that state. I think there are many hypotheses as to how men will do so biologically, but clinically we do know that as long as you are suppressed, meaning that your testosterone is under 50, you know, which is what we call castrated levels of testosterone, your PSA cannot rise. So meaning that if you are on an active therapy while you are suppressed, there is, n there is no possibility for you to have a rise in PSA if you are in fact castration sensitive, which means that you're responding to treatment. So if at any given time your PSA rises or you develop radiographic changes, meaning progressive disease in the scans, or if you develop new symptoms that are consistent and concerning for uh, symptomatic progression, that makes definition for castration resistant. You do not need, however, the three of them. You don't need symptoms, x-ray findings, and, and, um, and serologic progression to meet that definition. Any of those three in the context of a suppressed testosterone level will make that definition for castration resistant. I think that's important for, 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 for the viewers to understand that it is not the three of them, it's any of those three. Now, obviously, how do you progress will define how do we sequence you in the treatment options. So if you have an asymptomatic patient with a rising PSA on testosterone suppression, where they got ADT, ABI, or ADT chemo, that se sequence of treatments may be different than the patient who will become symptomatically right, or radiographically uh, explosive, explosive disease, if you will. Traditionally, the natural history of prostate cancer is very, very, uh, you know, tra it's, it's traditional in the sense that we know most people will progress first by PSA. There is a lead time bias between that PSA that is going up and when the scans change. And once you have a scan findings, there is a gap in time again between scan findings and symptomatic disease. That's a very uh, structured natural history that we all understand. So it's very uncommon for us to see patients developing symptoms before their PSA rise and or developing a scan findings before their PSA rise. There are pocket of patients who do that, but the vast majority of patients in the context of castration sensitive, progressing into castration resistant, will do so primarily by virtue of their PSA.